Hi, I'm Bill Lancaster, and I'm going to be your host in this uh, video on, on doing all black in a, on a bowl using black paint. Uh, back in October, a French artist named Pierre Soulage, S O U L A G E S, Soulage, Pierre Soulage died. And I was talking him on the internet, and so I was reading about him, and he did all black, and he just varied the texture of the black underneath so that you got a different appearance. And so I thought, you know, I wonder how that would be in wood. You could do that and, and texture the wood and paint it black and maybe do something similar. So I started doing some of that stuff. So here's one. Uh, and the whole thing about the black is, is you uh, get a reflection of light off the black. And then where there's a texture, it doesn't reflect in the same way. So uh, you see that the, uh, I hope you can see that on the camera, the, uh, the way the light reflects off the black. Now on the inside of this bowl, I just painted it a gray, which came out kind of a silver. But uh, at any rate, you see the, uh, the way this thing does, it's not too bad. So I, I bought some cheap poplar. Big mistake, I shouldn't have bought poplar. Poplar has a problem with a grain tear out. So I've been trying to work with grain tear out on all these bowls I've been doing. And, so uh, it's not been the best um, result, but I'll show you some things that I have done. This is a uh, a uh, a poplar bowl, and I've coated it with two coats of water locks. And I first I sanded it to 400 grit, and then I coated it with two coats of water locks, and then I put a texture in it with a with an elf tool. See this thing right there? That's an elf tool. And, the, uh, and then I made a little groove on the edge with a little three-pointed tool. I'll show you the elf. If you haven't seen the elf yet, you, you uh, need to know what that looks like. And what I do with my elf. Here it is. This is the elf tool. And you can see the elf spins inside this little, little uh, case. And makes a neat little little groove and then I made a I just had a three a three-sided pointing tool I made these grooves in it with so now that one is waiting to uh, to have the black applied to it I can't put the black on today because the, the humidity is too high here in South Carolina in uh, where I am is 80 percent humidity I need to have it uh, uh, somewhere below 60. So you see I haven't even done the insides yet. I, I like to do it this way. I go ahead and do the outside all the way to the point of finish and then I come back and do the inside. I like to do that because I like to have the tenons available on both sides to, uh, to put on the lathe. So you see that. I'll show you some other things I have gotten started on. This one has a little different shape to it you'll see. And I have sanded that now to uh, uh, 400 grit. I had it all black in the beginning and, and I had grain tear out over here. So I was trying to get rid of the grain tear out and I took this thing all back right down to uh, the bare wood. And now I've gotten that grain pretty well uh, 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 taken off. I looked at a lot of videos on YouTube to see how you dealt with grain tear out. So next I'm gonna um, paint that one black and then we'll go from there now I have others this one is um, has already been painted black but you see the grain tear out there see how that looks it looks awful with this reflection it shows up even worse so I need to get rid of the grain tear out I'm not sure how I'm going to do that with the with the already painted black but the uh, the I used the little uh, uh, beading tool to do that groove on the side and the paint hasn't gotten down into the uh, into the groove you see that white you see the poplar showing through there so I've got several bowls that are kind of like that that are uh, that are uh, not completely covered with black that's got a great reflection on the bottom where there's not the grain tear out but the grain tear out is a real problem now I'll get some other things to show you it's got two others and then we're going to get on with uh, showing you how to do the the uh, painting and the uh, rest of the bowls. So here's one similar to the last one 
uh, just a little different design and a little different shape and uh, a little different beading. You see the, the beads there on the side and also there's a lack of paint at the bottom. So for paint, I'm just using the Rust-Oleum rattle can. Uh, this thing. So this is called an Ultra Paint and Primer Gloss Black. Not sure I should have gotten a primer, but I did anyway. That's what I've got. You have to follow the directions on that to make sure you do it the way they want it done. And then here's the last one I'll show you. It's uh, got a little elf um, embellishment there on the bottom. And I like that I have to paint these on a, um, on a, um, uh, a painting board and so I, I, I can't do what I usually like to do which is to paint it on the lathe and then let it spin on the lathe while it sets and the paint that way if you do it that way you don't get these drips I've got a few drips in it so um, uh, that's what I'm aiming to do just a difference in texture but all black so um, I'm going to turn you off now I and mean, when I come back I will have painted these all black and we'll try to go from there and see where we are but uh, at least for now that's what I have to say and uh, I'm going to do the second half of this video uh, in, in just about probably a day or two after the paint dries. Bye. Folks I've moved the, um, the camera to the other side of the lathe because I want you to see these two cuts I'm going to try to do here. Um, am I running? Just let me see this thing. Okay, is it running? I think yeah, it's running. Okay, I've got the. Um, uh, the I'm going to pull the, the face shield down in a second. It's going to change the sound. But what I have to do here is take off this um, this grain tear out, and also the paint. And I'm going to use two cuts with a David Ellsworth, the David Ellsworth signature gouge, which is this. It has a long swept black side, it's a parabolic flute, and let me blow out the center of it. Um, I say I'm going to try this because I'm just learning this myself, and uh, I could screw up. The first one I'm going to do is a, a sheer cut, which is this, and we're going up grain up grain which is you keep the uh, keep the right side of the uh, flute off the wood and you just use the the uh, kind of the point of the left side you anchor it against your side and just move your your uh, hips to the right I'm going to turn it fast it's not going to be real real fast I don't like to go much over a thousand so I'll put the face shield down oops going backwards You have to have a, a lathe that spins pretty true to do this, to put something back on. So I've got to run it up to about, um, well, there's 728. Okay, here we're going to try this. Now I'm just going to touch that left side with a shearing cut. And there comes the black paint. I adjusted the angle to the floor so that I would be using the uh, the left corner of the tip and kind of doing some repeated cuts. That's the less dangerous of the two I'm going to show you. Let's see what we're doing here. Well, we're making a little progress, but it's got some grain bust out in the usual spots. Now, the other one I'm going to do, and we're going up grain because that's the way David Ellsworth teaches this uh, move. We're going to go up grain, and this time I'm going to use the bevel, but I'm using the, uh, the side of the tip. You see what I'm doing there? So it's going to be a wide, wide open flute. So I'm on the bevel, and I'm going to go up this side. And this is where you can make a mistake, and it could could be a mess. So just watch me, folks, and see if I make a mess. I'm going to 
place the uh, the heel of the gouge down on the wood and then just turn it slightly in until it starts to cut right there and then move it along I've got to go back and pick up that little corner which can give me a worse I don't want to go too deep because I don't want to make it different from the uh, rest of the bowl. Now let's see what we got. I think I've got a little bust out there, uh, but it's better. And I've gotten the uh, the paint off, so I had to probably had to sand it from that point forward. This little black line you see. When I shape the lip, the rim of it is going to go away. So, um, okay, that's going to have to have some sanding done to it. But I'm going to do another one. And let's see if I can get this thing mounted. grabbed hold of the camera and shouldn't have done that okay um, now this one is similar get it mounted and I'll show you I uh, usually to get these things back on the way just the way I had them off you see a little pencil mark right there? That goes with the number one jaw. This is a Vic Mark chucking. So these jaws are numbered. So I center that right in the uh, center of the Vic Mark. Just use my thumb against the bottom, which I was taught to do, which gets it to, gets it very flat in there. Let me see what I've got to do here. Why isn't it, oh, it's got to be close some more to go. Why isn't it fitting there? It's not seated in some opening up now to try to, try to, uh, there we go. Get, get the jaw, there we go, that's, that got it. Okay, tighten it up. And they say tighten all four of these. There are only two, but you do them twice. I've said that before probably. So there's one, two. You don't want to crush the tenon. This is poplar wood. It's not wet, it's dry. So that may do it right there. And you see I've got this tear out below, below my grooves and above. Below and above. So I've got to decide if I'm going to try to take that out. I know I'm going to take this out, which is, I can do it above the groove a lot easier I've got to do that I just have to it looks so bad so I guess I'm going to do the um, shearing cut on that maybe on the whole side okay get my gouge back here and let's try it so far we did pretty well I did this uh, little bevel cut pretty darn pretty darn successfully I'll try that again good it's spinning pretty true I just want to get me try it right there and get the uh, cutting edge going there we are That's the most dangerous point right there on the uh, on the rim. Okay, I've got a little a little uh, little dip there. Okay, but that's looking pretty good. Now I've got the black paint off, and the uh, the the tear out is better. But I've got this tear out here that's awful, and should be also down here. And they are. I made these original cuts with a bevel cut going the other way. 
like this. Um, but I have to go backward this time. So I'm going to try starting right there and go backwards. And, but I'm going to use the, uh, don't ever stick the, um, the side of this chisel into the, the bowl. You'll get a bad catch and it'll, if you're on the inside of a bowl doing that, it'll, it'll explode the bowl. So I'm putting this, uh, the handle against my side. I'm rotating inward. I can't see what I'm doing. Going slowly. I have to do some more up here because it's not right. This is not for beginners to do this, you know. It's just it's not. You've got to have real good tool control to do this. That's what we're doing. I like to stop and look at these things pretty often to see how I'm doing. This is uh, it's got some black paint and some bust out there, some tear out. Oh shoot, okay. Well I'm gonna try the shearing cut. Now I'm gonna try that same thing again. That worked pretty well. Let's try that again. Okay, get myself where I can move. Put the handle against my side. Bring the uh, cutting edge down. I have to move my feet. Which ordinarily you don't want to do. But I have done it. I'm looking here at this profile, trying to get a decent one. Let's look at it from a stopped lathe position. Okay, it's better. I might can sand that now and get it out. Still has some bust out. I don't, I'm probably not going to buy any more poplar. This was a, a poplar board that I got and um, sawed it to make these things. Probably gonna get maple next time. It costs a little bit more, but it will not get so much grain tear out. So something maple or maybe cherry, something else that won't have so it would just be a a better wood. I like doing dry wood and I'm gonna take a class with David Ellsworth in about two weeks up in Weaverville, North Carolina. And uh He always just likes to use wet wood, and now that we may go out in the woods and cut the wood. I'm gonna make one more cut right there. I don't like it. It's got some bust out there. Just lightly drop that bevel down. Okay. Oh shoot, this is a little bit better, but not, not fixed really. And that was the same. So I'm going to quit. And we will, uh, we will paint and then... Actually, what I need to do is put shellac on, the, uh, on this bare wood. And you'll find out, if you'll get um, Zinsers Sanding Sealer, read the small print on it, and it will tell you is 100% unwaxed shellac. So that's what you want, unwaxed shellac. I have made some, and you get the little flakes to do that with. Uh, make the little flakes and, and get little flakes, buy them off the internet, and then add denatured alcohol to it, or go to the liquor store and get some uh, grain alcohol and mix it. And I've done that, I've got 1%. So I can put the 1% on there in about three coats. And then when I come back to sand it, it will the, the, the uh, shellac will bind those fibers together a, a bit and it will be a little bit better for uh, uh, for sanding it off and losing the, the bust out, the tear out. So well girl, boys and girls, that's what I'm doing for now. And uh, I will see you tomorrow. I've got one more. I may try. Let me just hang on a minute. 
Let's just try one more. I've got another one. And I might, since I'm set up to do this, I might just go ahead and try it. I thought it was, it was too big a challenge and too risky to do on the, uh, on the video. But it's, it can't be any more risky than that one, can it? So here it is. It's, and you see uh, the grain. Oh, it's bad. The grain bust that. Let's try it. Okay, there's my mark. I'm a number one jaw. There it is right there. And let's put this in there on the number one jaw. Thumb against the uh, center of the bottom. Okay. One. Same as the last one, honestly. Okay. Okay, here we go. We have to try to make sure we keep this thing, make sure it's always sharp. And when you, um, if you look at the cutting edge of this, if you see light reflecting off of it, it's not sharp. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead with it. Okay, let's try this thing again. Okay. Make it sure that the flute is just about on the bevel. Let it cut. Slide the hips forward. Go back and pick up this one. Touch the uh, the bead there. It's going to be have a little loss of paint, but that's okay. I'll pick it back up. Well, that turned out pretty well. I still got to hate that it's got a grain tear out. Only one one more cut there. It's always just one more. That's the last one that gets you, you know. I'm keeping the cut on the side of the tip, not the end. So that's why I'm having to shift around a little bit. And if you do this thing and move across the uh, two rest slowly, it works better, they say. So there we go. Now I'm gonna try this part right down there, the same thing. I'm beginning to like this cut. I'm holding the, um, the the gouge very, very lightly with both my right hand and the left. I've got to got to go around that curve too. Do it again. Oh, it's a little bit uh, breathtaking, let's face it. This is New Year's Day. No day is a good day to go to the emergency room, I guarantee it. Let's see what I've got there. Okay, grain bust out, paint, grain bust out and paint. Okay, some more, no, another cut. The speed of the lathe is a 728.
keep uh, adjusting the, the gouge and the body to make it all work. Now I'm pushing on it pretty hard. I'm under the tip. I'm going to come back. I cannot watch the uh, end of the tool. I have to watch the uh, the wood itself, and sometimes up there is better. Okay, this is that's a better better all around. I'm going to just kind of smooth that little baby out because I've got a, a dip in it now. That's my compressor coming on. I probably should have turned it off before I started. Okay, that's probably going to do it. Let's see what other damage I can do now. Hang on a second. That little compressor. It's a handy thing to have of blowing off stuff. Okay, let me see my other piece. Well, uh, that's it. That's all I'm doing. Okay, so we'll pick it up uh, with some, hopefully some, some uh, shellac on those. And then uh, uh, with the shellac, I'll do that same kind of cuts and try to smooth it out and also Use sandpaper starting with 80 grit, 80, 120, 180, uh, 220, 320, 400. So I'll go right up there and we'll see what we can get from, from my sandpaper and uh, try to get those smooth. I don't know why I work with these things so much. It's not worth it. Bye. Now, I want to finish this video up with um, by showing you what I've done, and I haven't finished any of them. Well, I have finished one of them, but but I haven't finished most of them. So you'll see, this is the, probably the best of the of the six inch ones that I've done, and you see the black paint, and then as I rotate it around, you'll see the uh, texturing I did with the Elf tool, and and I haven't done the inside at all, so it's just a plain uh, poplar, but. That's probably the best of the lot. The problem has been this grain tear out. You see that grain tear out right along the, the edge there? I've tried and tried and tried to get rid of that stuff and following uh, my wood turning friends advice and YouTube advice and everything I can find to try to get rid of that. But I think the, the key to it is really um, just getting better wood in the beginning so that I, I don't have the grain tear out and I'm probably the dry Poplar is not a good wood. I probably will get a maple, maybe even a hard maple next time to try to uh, to get that to do better. This is one that I have done the inside of. You see, I've painted that gray. And even here, if you can see this grain tear out along here, it's really pretty bad. Uh, and I think that's also a poplar. But I've uh, done the bottom of it with the texturing. And I have a different texturing tool that I use there, I'll show it to you. These little texturing tools have a wheel that spins around and makes a kind of a tread design on the, uh, on the wooden surface. So those two uh, I've used on this bowl and you can see the kind of markings that it makes. Now I'll show you some others that I've tried to do and, and try to get rid of the... Um, you see I've done the, the David Ellsworth um, cut here up, uh, the wrong way, up grain, with the, uh, with the tool um, wide open. And uh, using just the edge of the, of the end with it wide open, and that's a bevel cut. And I've, the problem with this has been uh, 
that I've, I've been a little hesitant to do it and so I probably pushed with the tool a little bit too hard and and got some ridges in the wood so those are gonna have to be sanded out and I haven't done that you see though this this uh, it's gonna, this this may look pretty good it's kind of interesting with this uh, with this uh, contrast between the black and the, the white so there's that and then there's this which has uh, 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 an elf tool uh, embellishment on it and a beading uh, embellishment and then I've got to do something with that with that wood but you'll see I've got the grain I've pretty well conquered the grain bust out there's a little bit of it right there so it had grain tear out or bust out in a couple of spots and I've pretty well gotten that tamed by uh, there's a little bit right there um, by using the uh, Ellsworth, the Ellsworth approach. So we've got to sand that. Now I've got two others that I've done that I thought were not quite as good, but I'll show them to you. I hope we can all learn from this. I'm certainly learning a few things. So you see this. Look at that very nice line there. It's made by the the, uh, the Ellsworth tool coming wrong way on the grain just like this and stopping and uh, it's a very fine fine line of paint there and this is the uh, the beading tool I've got to do some more sanding on that one and but before I can do the sanding I've got to put two coats of uh, water locks on it so that's going to take two days to dry I didn't want to prolong this video any longer than I already have this one is the same kind of thing, except I've got the grain tear out there. Well, there you are, folks. Um, that's what I have done, and I, I, I think we can do this better. The, um, the best one I've done, I think, is this one. And it's still got grain tear out on it. So I hope you've learned something from this. I have learned some good lessons, and I hope you have too, if you want to do this kind of thing. It's uh, not too hard to do, but you just have to uh, pay attention to the <sighs> buy good wood. That's my first piece of advice to you. Don't just buy dry poplar and expect this to work. You get this grain tear out and it really shows with the uh, black reflective paint. So don't, uh, don't just use any old kind of wood. You're gonna have to get some decent stuff. And, and if you're gonna paint it black, I would like to th think you might wanna get um, uh, maple or cherry, something decent. But uh, you don't wanna pay too much for it because you're gonna be painting it. So you want something that the, the grain doesn't look too good on anyway. And you don't have to try to search around and find something like that. So that's the... Uh, the idea, black on black, using the black paint, and the uh, I learned a lot with the Ellsworth cuts. So that'll be it for today. See you next time.